chapter 8.4, you need to remember how to factor. So on this page, or in your notes, I want you to try to write down at least seven ways that we've learned how to factor, starting in chapter 4 and chapter 5. Turn the video off and start writing them down, okay? Ready? Go. When we use our factoring methods, we're going to be able to, to go through any kind of factoring of expressions. This whole section 8.4 is on dealing with expressions and factoring expressions. And the key for doing all of these is that you always, always, always need to try to factor first before you start crossing things off. This first example here already has an expression that has been factored. When you want to try to reduce or simplify directions on most of these are going to say simplify. You have to make sure that something is looking like it is in question one in its factored form. If you have factors that match, you can go ahead and cancel them, get rid of them, but only if they match. And when you cancel things, you can either cancel up and down or you can cancel diagonally up and down if you have multiple expressions. Um, what you cannot cancel is going across. So since I've got x plus 3's on both the top and the bottom, those can cancel, which just leaves me with 4 over x minus 5. Question number 2 has not been factored. So when you think about all your factoring methods, hopefully one of them that you came up with was take out anything in common first. On this top, I can take out an x. Leaves me with x plus 7. In the bottom, I still have x squared. Now you need to remember your quotient property, x to the first over x to the second, bigger on the bottom, keep it on the bottom, and subtract from the bottom up, leaves me with x to the first. This top is x plus 7 as a quantity, the bottom is x, you can never take parts of a quantity. So what you cannot do is take the x and the x and tell me that the answer is 7. Absolutely not. x plus 7 is a quantity. You either have to take the whole quantity or nothing at all. So this answer is x plus 7 over x. Question number three are two trinomials. We need to factor both of them. x squared minus 8x plus 16 should factor into x minus 4, x minus 4. And then x squared plus 2x minus 24, x plus 6 and x minus 4. Now you've got an x minus 4 quantity that's the same on both the top and the bottom. I can take one of them from the top, one from the bottom, which leaves me with x minus 4 over x plus 6. And again, you cannot take these x's, cannot cancel those x's, you cannot reduce the 4 and the 6 and tell me it's 2 thirds. Each one of those pieces is a quantity. x minus 4 is a quantity. x plus 6 is a quantity. Can't reduce that any farther. On this next one, if you're asked to multiply fractions together, for this one, these are just monomial uh, pieces. There's no pluses or minus signs going on in here. So these are all monomials. So what you're going to do is start looking up and down or diagonally up and down to try to reduce things. For instance, I see a 5 and I see a 15. 5 goes into 5 once, into 15, 3 times. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 into 27, 9 times. That takes care of the numbers. On the top, I've got x squared here, I've got an x to the first here, I can reduce those. Quotient property says to subtract, that's going to leave me with x to the first on the top. y to the third, y to the fourth, leaves me with y to the first on the bottom. Moving to the second fraction, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, leaves me with an x to the first on the top, and then I've got a y left over. So now you want to look to see if I have anything else, or maybe I just need to put it all together with my multiply. All the way across the top, 1 times 9, x times x, there's x squared. All the way across the bottom, I have a 3, which means I can reduce one more time, 9 and 3, y times y is y squared, 3x squared over y squared, should be my final answer.
Next page. We're still multiplying, but this time we're multi multiplying a binomial, binomial, and in the top here, trinomial, binomial. So again, everything always has to be factored first. You are never allowed to start saying, oh, gee, here's an x squared, here's an x squared, I'll get rid of those. Never, ever can you do that. All right, so looking at the top, 20x minus 5x squared. These two have a 5x in common, so let's take out the 5x. That's going to leave me with 4 minus x. In the bottom, x squared minus x, I'll take out one of the x's. I'm left with x minus 1 times by the trinomial on the top, x squared plus 3x minus 4. x plus 4, x minus 1. And in the bottom, difference of two squares, that should have been one of your factoring methods, x plus 4, x minus 4. Now we look to start crossing things off. Here I have an x plus 4 and an x plus 4. On the bottom I have an x minus 1, and kitty corner on the top I have an x minus 1. Those can go. I have an x to the first with an x to the first. Those can go. Then I'm left with 5, 4 minus x over x minus 4. Now these two quantities are almost the same. Not exactly, but almost the same. So here's something that you want to remember. If you have a minus b on the top, and a b minus a on the bottom, exact same values, but reversed in the order, those will always cancel to give you negative 1. Well, how come? I can leave a minus b as it is. In the bottom, if I were to factor out a negative 1 from both of these, so divide out a negative 1, that would leave me with a negative b and a positive a. a minus b over negative 1. Change the order on these two guys now put the positive A in the front and the negative B in the back. Now I do have the exact same thing. Those can cancel, and the only thing I'm left with is the negative 1. So something to watch for. If you ever see A minus B over B minus A, let me give you just another quick sample. X minus 10 over 10 minus X. That would be an example. Y minus 3 over 3 minus Y. That's another sample. All of those would reduce to give you negative 1. So since I have that here, these will reduce to give me negative 1, which means what I have for my final answer is just negative 5. The next one, x minus 4 over x to the third plus 8 times by x squared minus 2x plus 4. I'm going to put this over 1 just so you can see it. Okay. One of the methods, hopefully you may have remembered on the first slide, was factoring a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes. If you didn't, let's make sure we get that back on our list. This is the one where we want to remember soap. A, plus, or a cubed plus B cubed. Well, what do each of those come from? A cubed comes from A, B cubed comes from B. So the first bracket is A plus B. The bigger bracket in the back, first term squared, these two guys multiplied together. And in the back will be the back term squared. So, same, opposite, always plus. Same is plus, plus. Opposite will be minus, always plus, going in the back. And then our a cubed, b cubed, let's follow the same rule. a minus b, a squared, opposite sign, ab, always plus, b squared. We need to use that now to help us factor x to the third plus 8. x minus 4 will not cancel. x cubed plus 8 comes from x plus 2. First term squared will be x squared. Change your sign, 2 times x plus 2 squared, 4. This will now multiply by x squared minus 2x plus 4 over 1. Well, check out your bracket x squared minus 2x plus 4 is the same on the top and the bottom. That whole quantity is now gone, leaving me with x minus 4 on the top, x plus 2 times 1, just x plus 2. And again, please do not cancel those x's. Do not reduce 4 and 2 and leave it with just a 2. 
You cannot cancel parts of terms that have been joined with a plus or a minus sign. Dividing fractions. Again, the rule with dividing fractions. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the second, second fraction reciprocal, 4 over 3. Never, never flip the first fraction. First fraction always stays the same. One half, in this simple example here, one half. Change your divide to times. Flip the 3 fourths. Now you can reduce. 2 goes into 4 twice, leaving me with 2 thirds. All right, let's try that with this one x squared minus 4x minus 21. I would always suggest factor first before you do the flipping. Factor first. x squared minus 4x minus 21. x minus 7, x plus 3. Over. 5x plus 15, take out the 5. x plus 3. Right away I'm going to see an x plus 3, I'm going to be able to reduce. Times by. Now the second one is going to flip upside down. x squared minus 100 is a difference of squares. x plus 10, x minus 10. That's going to end up on the top. And then in the bottom, x squared plus 3x minus 70. x plus 10. x minus 7. Now let's look for things that can uh, cancel. x plus 10s are gone. X plus 3's, which we mentioned, would be gone. I'm left with an X minus 7 way over here, which goes with this X minus 7 way on the bottom. Kitty corner diagonally we can go. And the only thing I'm left with is an X minus 10 on the top, and on the bottom is a 5. And again, please, please do not take the 5 and the 10 and put a 2. No, don't do that. Your answer is X minus 10 over 5. That 10 is part of the quantity of x minus 10, cannot take part of a quantity. I believe this is our last one. Yes, last one. 3x squared plus 13x minus 10. I put this one in here because this is an a Sorry for the question. interruption. If you are a student who is scheduled for your Sorry, class recap, please go to your assigned location now. Thank you. AC method. First term times the back term. 3 times negative 10, negative 30. Can you think of two numbers that will multiply to give us negative 30 that will add to give us positive 13? 15 and 2. 15 is going to be positive, 2 on the negative. So we're going to rewrite the top term. 3x squared plus 15x minus 2x minus 10. Cut it in half. Let's factor by grouping. Take out the 3x. We're left with x plus 5. See the minus sign? Factor out the negative sign. They also have a 2 in common, so we're taking out a negative 2. Uh, uh, again, negative 2, leaving us with x plus 5. The brackets match, x plus 5, 3x minus 2. There's your top. The bottom is just 6x squared. Can't factor that, it's a monomial. Divide by. Change the divide into a times by. The second fraction is going to flip upside down. Well, it's originally doesn't have a bottom, so when I flip it, the 1 will become on the top, and then I can factor the top, put it on the bottom. 3x squared minus 2x, the only thing that has in common is the x. Take that out, and we're left with 3x minus 2. Now look, up and down or diagonally up and down, what do you have in common? 3x minus 2 can go. Nothing else, so all the way across the top, what I'm left with is the quantity of x plus 5. And then across the bottom, 6x squared times another x, 6x to the third. x plus 5 over 6x to the third. All right, so my biggest piece of advice when you're doing any type of simplifying of expressions, always, always, always factor first. Make sure those are factored. Then start taking pieces that they have in common. Once you find pieces in common, cross those off, whatever is left over, multiply across the tops, multiply across the bottoms, and when reducing, never ever take pieces of terms. It's either the whole term or nothing at all.